Okay guys, so I'm just gonna show you a basic tutorial with coloring. Um, I've already started, so um, it's just gonna be really simple. Uh, right now, I have my lines on a separate layer. Uh, that's what this is. And I have a neutral background. Um, that's because when you're choosing colors, if you do it on a white background, uh, your colors are typically washed out and they won't look right. So you normally want a neutral background color. Um, I've also already started on the skin. Everything you're going to do is going to be on separate layers. So um, I'll just rename this lines. Okay, um, so I've got one skin color down. Let's start on the next one. Um, and I need that color. Okay, um, so I'm going to start a new layer. Okay, um, the tool you use is um, going to be this wand tool, or you can hit W with your keyboard. This is going to be your best friend. It's the greatest thing for coloring. So let's go on the lines layer, and we're going to select um, everything that we're going to color. And if you select wrong, just undo like I just did, because that will happen. Okay. So we go to that empty layer, um, choose the bucket, or you can hit G, and then just fill it in. Okay? And then um, to deselect it, you can either Control D or you can go to Select, Deselect. And then um, just take your brush, which is right here, uh, make sure it's a solid one and you don't have any of your pressure settings on. And then we're just going to fill in. Uh, where the wand missed. If you change the tolerance on your wand tool, uh, which is right here, that will affect what it selects or not. I just typically keep it at 30. It's easier that way for me. Okay, so the skin layer is done. Uh, let's go ahead and work on the hair. I'm going to make a new layer which is just this button here, and I'm going to put that under the skin, and you'll see why in a minute. So um, I'm going to select the hair colors that I need, um, and then we're going to do one bit at a time. So again, select the hair that you need, um, and we'll name that one so I know what I'm doing, and then just fill that in. Okay, now you see all of these little splotches here. Um, if you had this all on the same layer, um, it would mix with the skin, but because we did it underneath, I can just be sloppy and color it in, and I don't have to worry about it going into the skin layer. This is just to save time, because if you had the hair layer on top of the skin, um, it would end up like that, and we obviously don't want that. Okay. selecting again and filling in okay um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the face layer next uh, this is the only layer that we will put on top of what we've been doing and I generally do this all at once so um, first we're going to do the whites of the eyes and we don't need to use the selection just make sure you're on the correct layer and just color in the white of the eyes and also we'll do the teeth okay um, I'm going to go ahead and teach you some shading real quick because I always shade the face first um, there's this button here and that will lock uh, the specific colors of the layers you're on uh, it's what we're going to use whenever we use shading so when you do this that means I can draw anywhere it won't matter unless I'm drawing where there was color in that layer um, so let's choose a soft brush I'm gonna turn on the pressure 
uh, sensitive transparency. If you don't have that, just bring the opacity down. Um, that will help. And then just lightly put shadow there. Um, now I'm going to switch to a white color, and I'm doing pressure sensitive size shape, and I'm going to turn that off, and just, that's just adding some shine to the eye, because whenever you see eyes, they're not typically, um, exactly white, so, let's just get that. Okay, now the actual eye color, turning both of those off because we're just coloring this now. And if this were a larger image, um, I would actually make the eye, um, the iris more detailed, I would add shadows to it, but we really don't need to. I'll just add some light there. Okay, um, now I can turn this off because I'm not going to be dealing with the white anymore. So now I can draw wherever I want on the screen um, for the inside of the mouth if it will let me click. Choose a dark red. And I can use this selection again for this part. Just make sure you don't ever color in the lines section, you will really regret that later if you do. Make sure you're always on the layer that you need. Okay, uh, before I do anything else, um, she's going to have lipstick, but we're going to do something else, so I'm going to make a new layer again. And let's put this under the face, and we'll call this face two. Okay. So I'll use the solid brush. So the reason why I put it on a different layer is so I can draw in this area and it's not going to get in the way of the inside of the mouth. So again, we're going to lock this layer, um, use the darker color, choose a softer brush, and choose the um, opacity one and then just draw in some of that. And then I have the highlight color there and just add a little bit of a shine, not too much. I'm going to unlock that, and then let's color in, make that solid again, turn that off, okay. So now the face is done, I don't want to mess with that anymore. So um, I'm going to put these two face pieces together, and what I can do, um, the way I do it is I, this is selected, then I hold down shift and select that as well, and then control E, and that puts it all on one layer. Um, what you can also do is have the two selected, um, go to layer, and then merge layers, and it will do the same thing, and we're just going to leave that alone for now. Okay, so we got our basic coloring done. I'm going to go into how I shade now. Again, this is going to be uh, very simplistic. So um, let's. we're already done with the face layer, so I'm going to lock that. That means I can't do anything to it. Um, this first skin layer is for this area here. I'm going to click that lock button again. That locks the colors, so we're only working in the colored area. I'm going to choose um, the shade skin color that I've done, and um, I'm going to be using the lasso tool, that's this button right here, or you can just click L, and um, with it, just draw in where the shadows would be, um, and select this whole area, 
and I can select anywhere like I, I said again um, we're only working in the color area when you need to select more at a time hold down shift and you'll see that plus there and that means you can add more to this selection if you don't hold it it's going to try and select something else and you can just click undo um, let's say I select this area and I didn't want it hold down the alt key and you'll see that minus and I can just delete that selection so let's just draw in the shadows there and that should be good um, I'm on the skin layer that I need I have it locked so I'm gonna choose the fill bucket or the G button and then uh, fill it in then deselect or control D and there we have the shadows done. Uh, the skin is gonna look weird without everything else shaded don't worry about it just you know stay focused okay we're on the next skin layer um, this is also if you're not familiar if you click on these eyes it will hide the layer so you can make sure you're on the right layer uh, lock it again and then we're just gonna go in with the lasso tool again and uh, draw in where all the shadows would be and this can take some getting used to um, when you're not using the brush tool you'll and you don't see it until the very end um, it can be confusing about where the shadows would be it just takes practice and messing around with it Uh, shadows can also be used for implied lines. Uh, there are certain shapes that the skin makes that would look weird if you added an outline. Uh, so for instance, this area would be curvy, so I'm just going to do a shadow showing that it's curvy as opposed to drawing a dark outline and then filling, filling it in because it'll look really weird if you do that. Okay, So I think I have everything selected. Um, that I need I can always change it later I'm gonna fill it in um, and it doesn't always fill in all areas so just you know click around and then deselect and that looks about right if there was anything I wanted to add um, I could choose the brush and then just fill in like that but that'll be okay I'm okay with that okay um, so next is the hair and you're just gonna keep doing this um, it can be a little annoying just doing the same thing over and over again but it's worth it in the end and this is a lot easier than coloring with the brush the whole way through so here's more of that um, implied line again this the hair is swooping in and then out um, in real life you would see shadows there so I'm couldn't draw in a shadow there even though I don't have any lines there and then fill and see it's already coming together okay so um, that's basic shading tips um, what I used for this was Photoshop CS5. Um, if you don't have that but want to do digital coloring, uh, there's a website you can go to. It's pixlr dot com slash editor and um, it's a free site. It's basically a Photoshop clone. Um, it's really easy to use. It doesn't have everything that Photoshop has but um, it has all of the tools that I showed you today. So um, have fun.